The main is so simple, it's amazing. So simple. Mm. Hey everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you're well. Welcome to another four, three ingredients or items. It's generally items to get more value for your money. Two try, one time in your life. And I blooming love this playlist. It's especially like budget friendly recipes we're all looking for right now and opening that creativity so you can stack a few more ingredients or items on top and hopefully save yourself some money, get really creative in the kitchen and hopefully make some really nice food. Four recipes today, start a main dessert drink as usual. Uh, I think we'll get the drink out of the way. I was gonna genuinely do a cake batter milkshake. That was what I went to the supermarket with my intentions to do. We'll do that on a follow-up one. But this is what happens. I love going to a supermarket. I will stand there, literally. It would look a bit weird, but if it was empty, I think I could stand in there for hours just getting ideas. So I was going in there thinking I'm making a milkshake, but then the first aisle I got to was this fruit aisle. And this was reduced, right? It doesn't matter that it's reduced, it's just the fact that it was there and vibrant and popped. This was a pack of pineapple, mango, and also this is passion fruit seeds, all right? So if you're new here, that is one item, but you could just get mango, pineapple, whatever to do this. We're also going through quite a lot of different milks at the moment. Uh, Chloe is a huge fan of coconut milk, so I got some of that. And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna go a little bit healthier today as well and add a teeny bit of crunch. We're gonna not whiz these up. We'll add these in and stir them through at the end. These are seeds that I've always wanted to call chaya, but I believe they're kind of more pronounced like chia, chia. So that's it. We're gonna combine this all together, keep it in the fridge till right at the end and it should be rather stonking indeed. Obviously, the more you add, the more thinner and slightly watery or liquidy it will be. And obviously, the less that you add, it will be thicker and more like a puree. That smells really, really good. So I've got about two tablespoons of it there. That's what they look like. All right. Um, if we whiz them up, I mean, it would great add to the recipe, but you would not get, you'd not get that texture. We're going to get some even more speckles in there. Ah, oh, yes. I know this is gonna sound really weird, but I wanted it to look a little bit frog spawny, and we have achieved that. I wanted it to like look interesting. That's the drink done, easy. We're gonna work on the dessert next. In fact, the main dish today, we're gonna to do something I might call apple pie cups. And this is amazing. The only downside for me is for apple pie filling, which you can normally buy in tins. Uh, my supermarket didn't have them. They had apple slices, so we'll whiz those up. Or if you wanted to do stewed apple, buy an apple, boil it in water, a little bit of sugar, uh, and, and you got homemade. But I like the idea with having chunks like this. We can whiz this up to the texture we want. We can completely pulp it, or maybe get a bit of chunkiness too. The other thing, ready-made puff pastry, right? This stuff is insanely convenient. You can make and tweak so many recipes with it. I think we've done one or two times on this playlist with this. Remember, if it's your first time watching these videos, there are loads of ideas. I blooming love doing this playlist. But what you get with these, this is a cinnamon roll one, right? So you've already got the dough flavored with cinnamon. You get a little icing sugar sachet, so it's a three, Bonus ingredient, add water with that. We've got a glaze for our pie. In here, oh my gosh, they're getting smaller, right? Oh. Along with some toffee sauce, or I could have just got some ice cream, we're gonna make toffee apple cups. Awesome, nice thick slice of it at the moment. So this is a cupcake tray that I've just lightly greased with butter. I kind of let myself have butter as a bonus ingredient because it's just greasing. Although you could probably get away with it. This is a non-stick uh, tray. And I'm gonna, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Oh, I really just wanna bake that like that now. But no, we are gonna give it a really horrible day. All right, we are gonna squish it down in the middle, first of all, just to compress it all in and form a bucket, a cup, if you will to fill with our apple. So that was one tube. Uh, it's almost like destiny and fate. It has fitted this perfectly. Remember, I've not tested any of these recipes. If these turn out horrendous, I'll give you notes on advice how you could probably do them better or probably tell you not to do it at all. I'm fairly confident with this though. That's worked out really, really well. So now we've got this tin oh, of sliced apples. Look at that, oh, they're peeled at least, that's good. I don't know if we've all done it in life. I have eaten an apple in its entirety, including the core and the seeds and all that. I'm not gonna whiz it any more than that. I'm quite happy with that. I've actually got some more sort of like chunks and shreds for a bit of texture. We will be still topping that with the toffee and the icing. So I'm gonna keep those nice and cold 
and uh, we'll show you the starter. For the starter, I was gonna do some beef and horseradish, kind of like appetizer things with focaccia bread. But then I thought about the diversity that you get with bagels, you get so many different toppings on there. So then I started going, oh, what about cream cheese and adapting it and stuff like that? And then all of a sudden, I don't know why, I've ended up <laughs> <laughs> with sweet chilli jam in my basket. So instead of beef and horseradish focaccia, we are gonna do bagels, but we're gonna flatten these. We're gonna squish them to make them into larger like flatbreads. We're gonna get them nice and charred up on their own first of all, and then finish them off with a coat of jam and melt some mozzarella. Potentially, and this is where I don't know yet, I still haven't made my mind up, we might fuse two together. So we'll do a bit of both. And just increasing that surface area. Wow, that is proper thin, it's like a CD. Tried to recycle some CDs the other day. You know how like vinyl is like quite valuable and holds its worth? Charity shops won't take them. Okay, I'm not gonna debate the choice of music, but they're like, no, no one really wants them. They have the flimsiness of a slipper, but I'm gonna grill them. Okay, so they should hopefully get nice and lightly browned. You might better hear the grill calming down. That thing is angry. Right, bagels are done. It, I had to really watch that like a hawk. But luckily they're nice and lightly browned and they can cool down. I've switched it to the oven so we can get our dessert going because these are just gonna be need to be warm through to get that jam sticky and the cheese melted. And I'm still mulling over whether I fuse these together or not. I don't know. So I'm just gonna do like a teaspoon of the sweet chili jam. It's almost sort of brought them to life actually. And to be fair, that's kind of like a twist on jam on toast. You have that as a snack, although it'll probably catch people out if you don't tell them it's chili jam. <laughs> so I've just got a mozzarella ball and I'm just gonna put on some specks of it there. They remind me slightly of Toad uh, from the Mario Brothers and all that. But the good news with these, they can go in the oven and warm through at the same time. Obviously we're gonna bake the apple pie cups and we're gonna melt up that mozzarella and warm up that jam. Oh my gosh, but I want it warm. So, although really with the timings I can get those going before we start the main, the main is so simple, it's amazing. I just wanna make sure we get it right. So they'll go in once we get started, all right? I mean, if I wasn't filming this, if I was you, and you, there's a guy called Mike, right? He did this for his girlfriend. There was definitely someone else that tweeted me. It wasn't the same person, but there's people that actually do these 4321s as a playlist, as a date night, and I blooming love it. Send me a photo if you want, if you're doing that, and I'll put it in a video. That'll be it. I don't know if that's weird, but I think that's pretty cool. For the main, we are gonna do a teriyaki chicken veggie bowl. It is absolutely packed with flavor. And the really cool thing with this, we're effectively just basically warming it up. Okay, there's a little bit of wilting and cooking, but you could have this, well, you don't wanna have it raw or fully. Make sure you cook the noodles. So, we have got some teriyaki noodles. They have not only got teriyaki sauce in there with the noodles, they have got their own stock flavoring in there. So we can boil it in water with the stock, with the noodles, add the teriyaki sauce with a whole pack of stir fry mix, the carrots, bean sprouts, peppers, all that stuff is gonna go in that stock with it and all cook together. One huge, massive mass with that optional thing. If you're a vegetarian, you wouldn't do this, but this is, if you're vegetarian, of course you wouldn't eat chicken. You can use some vegetarian options, right? But this is some ready to eat salted, charred chicken. I'm effectively just gonna warm that through with everything else and dump it in a big old bowl with the teriyaki sauce on top. So simple. So we're gonna get ourselves a massive saucepan. So in these packs, of course, you get different flavored uh, chickens like that that are pre-cooked, some with like tandoori toppings, stuff like that. And the same with the noodles. We've got our noodles. Remember, we've got three of these packs as well. So we've got three lots of seasoning and three lots of the teriyaki sauce. We're gonna get this in first with that water. And I'm not using, oh my gosh, I've dropped the, <laughs> good job, it's still warming up. But I'm using a smaller amount of water so that we can potentially use the whole of that broth. Might as well get that cooking a little bit. So I've just put those bagels in down the bottom to warm through and the pies on the top. <laughs> I'm a bit flappy today, folks. Sorry if it's coming across like that because I actually have four deliveries happening and I've, one of them's just rung me now. I don't know why they do that. They ring you to tell you they're near. They're not near, <laughs> he's an hour away. I'm like, I know you're coming. And it, it's great because sometimes you don't get that. I've been text, email, pen paled. But if you're interested, that first delivery is a television for my garden kitchen because we're gonna be doing some shout outs in the background in nearly every video. Very exciting. If I remember to turn it on that is. Anyhow, with this excellent spoon, 
uh, we shall stir this through. To sort of soften up a little bit, those stir fry veg. Most supermarkets have them, if you, as you go in, they've got like this diced butternut squash and carrot and swede section. Like you can just completely go to town. And the freezer section, like I've used before, is a whole host of variety of things like that that you can use with things like the noodles to like completely transform a really simple dinner. And if you're using ready cooked chicken like that, this will literally take like 10 minutes max. So anyhow, this water is starting to come to a boil. I'm gonna shove in those rafts, they look like big old rafts. But they are bubbling away, the jam is bubbling, the, the mozzarella is melting, I might show you actually, let's do it. What I was mulling over doing was, if I just take, oh they all look so good, let's take a bad one. I was gonna turn it on top of each other like that. Oh look at the mozzarella! Oh that does look good actually. I think it looks amazing like that. I think it's fusing together really well. I really want that look with the poppy seeds popping like that, you see it? Possibly the worst camera angle ever. <laughs> Oh, yes. So in goes the chicken. Oh, wow. And remember, we've still got that teriyaki to go on top. See, I don't know why this excites me, right? I get really excited about it. But as you know, actually, with the garden kitchen, I have a videographer coming on board. And I really want to have someone that I can have banter with on a daily basis or interact with that can film me and I can sort of say, what do you think? Kind of like what hopefully what you're thinking. And I don't know if, that, if it's me getting really excited about like this and they're going to be like, yeah, it's just it's some noodles, really. <laughs> I'd be like, no. So I think that's one of the big job criteria. I want someone to have some, some fun with. Because I'm getting old, folks. I'm, f I'm struggling to film these days. This is heavy, all right? Yeah, I joked in the past about doing a playlist called, like, In Your Kitchen, where I, like, randomly pick. After I vet you, like, heavily, okay? Like, I actually come to your house and cook with you. If I have someone that can, like, film that for me, all of this becomes so much easier to do. And uh, look out for that. I'll, I'll find a way to vet you. I'll be like... Do you like cardboard cutouts in your house? <laughs> now you know that's what the important questions. And how's about these, huh? Check them out, all nice and lightly brown and golden. <coughs> Put them down there to cool. Shut my oven, drizzle my icing, serve this up. Caribbean smoothie thing in the fridge. <coughs> what the hell was that? Sizzling. Delivery on the way. Life's good. I have to help it out like that. Oh wow, that's actually amazing. Yes! The colours are a bit dull in this kitchen sometimes, it doesn't really help it, but honestly, that does look quite exciting. And we get to drench it. And we've got that toffee sauce. Oh my goodness. There is so many ways that you can take these recipes today and all the other playlists, so do check it out if you're looking for some budget, quick, creative opportunity recipes where you can really put your stamp on it. And then just drizzle some of that icing on as well. <laughs> like the cinnamon roll it was supposed to be. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. <laughs> These are all good. Uh, I mean, they're just kind of like crispy. I'm so glad we did that first bake to get that snap. They're going to be awesome. Let's not forget our chilled. I might just call it Jay-Z. Look at that. Oh, see, now I've chilled it. It has thickened. So if you want it runnier than that, I actually quite prefer a more sort of thick, chunky, smoothie texture. Absolutely love it. It smells so good. I'm dropping this everywhere. I literally just dropped noodles into the smoothie. Fantastic. Straight out of that sauce they give you. Amazing. Put some toasted sesame seeds on that if you want. Unbelievable. Oh, for a minute there, I wasn't in a Somerset village. I was by a pool with a book in hand. I don't read that many books, but it looks good, right? Sipping on that, just chilling in the moment in the sun. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love the textures to it, even with that chill. Love it. Adapt that around with the coconut milk if you want to make it even thicker. If you want it thinner, just stick a bit more of that in there. Oh. Mmm. 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 You've got that sort of sweetness from the bagel, the, the, the poppy seed flavour too, the crunch that we drove into it, that sweet chilli sweetness and heat. And I didn't really taste the mozzarella if I'm honest. <laughs> that is amazing. And do you know what? I'm glad that I doubled them up like that because it kind of brings it back to being a bagel except you just sort of played around with it. Mm. Now this I'm expecting to taste a lot like the branded noodles that we use, so it all depends on the quality that you get. So you could go to like your local supermarket, if you have like an Asian special supermarket near you, there's this massive one near me. And they have like two aisles full of some of the best like noodle mixes ever. Oh, that's outstanding. 
that is just really nice. I knew what I was going to get with that. I think that fresh glaze of the teriyaki on there, coupled with the nice chunky chicken pieces, really supports that. So it's not just completely veg heavy. If you're a vegetarian, like get some more denser veg in there, like big old chunks of courgette or aubergine or eggplant, wherever you are in the world. But it's like this nice little chunk where we've sort of revitalized it, warmed it, brought it back to life. Rather than sitting in the chilled section of the pre-cooked chicken with the wafer ham and the salami, he's like, oh right, yeah, I'll go, I'll go in there, that's cool. I'll go in some noodles. Just adds another depth and a texture to it. I need to be careful because I will eat all of that. And last but not least are these <laughs> toffee apple pie pots. They look a little bit like pastel donatas. Mmm. Oh, that is still slightly warm. I think that's why I really like that comforting and not too much crunch on it as well because a lot of the pastry was hidden. Only the top bit was exposed. That was where that real crunch was going to come. The rest is warmed up by that apple filling. You're getting that real toffee sauce clinging to it and the icing and the sweetness and the cinnamon is not too overpowering. Just gives it like a gentle spice. Oh my gosh. Before I tucked into this, I thought these were going to be my, my standout, but that is phenomenal extremely addictive they are comforting and warm and so flexible and so easy and this is delightful it is like a holiday in a glass don't have to do this but go into a supermarket and don't feel like like you've got a rush because everyone else is in a rush like take your time and you can get really really creative with just three ingredients there is so much that you can make with that amount of ingredients. It is phenomenal. So there we go, folks. If you try any of these, if you do that date night thing, um, perfect, uh, whether you're single as well. A lot of people have messaged me that saying they've done some recipes from there. So thank you so much. This would actually make four portions of that. So that is generally our dinner for this evening. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the videos for regular food fun content, and I will see you very, very soon. If you've ever wondered what a pug looks like when he's had maybe a little bit too much mozzarella, he looks like this. He's lying down. Cheers, Boston.